Hello, I'm Ming Kong Zeng. In this video, I'm going to talk about my research, which relates the Siegel conjecture, real bordism, and looping data E theories together. I get my PhD in 2018, supervised by Doug Ravenel in University of Rochester. I do research in equivariant and chromatic homotopy theory. My recent projects include the Siegel conjecture and real bordism, equivariant methods in chromatic homotopy theory. Let's start with some background. Chromatic homotopy theory decomposes a finite complex into pieces by localizations. Taking p-local sphere as an example, for each height, there is a homotopy pullback square like this. A theorem of Hopkins Ravenel says you can recover the sphere spectrum by taking the homotopy limit of the left vertical map. As a pullback square, that means understanding the top right corner, which is the kh local sphere, is crucial in understanding stable homotopy groups of spheres. This is where looping head E theory comes in. The E theory EH is obtained from the universal deformation of a height edge formal group law F. It comes with an action of the Morava stabilizer group, which is an extension of the automorphism. A theorem of Davinus Hopkins shows that you can compute KH local sphere by computing the homotopy fixed point of EH with this stabilizer group. For finite subgroups of the Morava stabilizer group, its homotopy fixed point is an important approximation of the KH local sphere. However, the group actions are very difficult to compute. In my research, we use equivariant stable homotopy theory to establish new results about the group action. Equivariant stable homotopy theory studies spectra and the group actions. There are two important applications that inspired my research. The first one is the Siegel conjecture. Let x be a connective spectrum and p be a prime. Then the Tate spectrum of its CP norm is a p completion of x. The norm functor is the induction using smash product. Especially the norm from trivial to CP group is the p full smash power of x with cyclic permutation action. Nicholas Schulzer showed that once the theorem is proved for x equals to HFB, the Allenberg McLean spectrum of FP, then a formal argument can be used to prove the theorem completely. A second inspiration is Hugh Hopkins Ravenel's solution of the covariant invariant 1 problem. They show that the covariant invariant 1 element doesn't exist for j larger or equals to 7. They construct a CA spectrum omega O whose fixed point detects the covariant invariant 1 element. Omega O is a localization of norm from C2 to CA of MUR, where MUR is a real Bordesian spectrum. They analyze norms of MUR by the equivariant slice spectral sequence to show that omega O has the desired properties. Now I'm going to talk about my research. Taking G equals C2, X is HF2. The Tate spectrum of the norm is HF2 itself. However, its Tate spectral sequence is very complicated. The E2 page is the Tate cohomology of the conjugate action on dual linear algebra. Except for the point at 0, 0, everything kills each other by mysterious differentials. This is the picture of the E2 page. As you can see, the differentials must be very complicated. We attack this problem by relating the norm of HF2 with a localization of norm of BPR, as in the classical case, BPR is a wedge sum of two local MUR and they contain the same information. Our first theorem says one can compute the fixed point of norm of HF2 by doing the localization on norm of BPR, then taking fixed point. And furthermore, we can modify the equivariant slice spectral sequence to a to going well with this localization to understand norm of HF2. We construct a localized slice spectral sequence to translate the computation. This theorem says there is a localized version of slice spectral sequence of norm of BPR. First, it computes the homotopy groups of norm of HF2. Second, it looks very similar to the original slice spectral sequence using in Hugh Hopkins Ravenel. Specialized norm from C2 to C4 of BPR, the spectral sequences look as follows. The left hand side is the original slice spectral sequence of norm of BPR, the right hand side is the localized version. As we can see, there is a large portion which are isomorphic to each other, and the right hand side converges to the norm of HF2. We can use the slice differentials from left hand side to compute right hand side up to 30 steps. 
Furthermore, we can use localized light spectral sequence to unveil differentials in the T spectral sequence of norm of HF2. Our theorem says there is a family of T differentials in norm of HF2. They are in one-to-one -one correspondence to the hugh hopkins ravenel slice differentials. This is the picture of known T differentials in the T spectral sequence, and the red differentials are the family which correspond to the HHR differentials. Finally, we realize the flow of the computation can go in the other way. In the work in progress, we will show that the slice spectral sequence of norm BPR can be recovered from the localized slice spectral sequence. That means if we can understand norm of HF2 by other methods, it will help a lot in computing norm of BPR. A natural question is, why do we care about norm of BPR? What's the computation good for? In the next project, we show that computing norm of BPR essentially computes all the Lubin TTE theories in all heights at prime 2 and with the C2 to the n action. A theorem of Kawit says that C2 to the n is a subgroup of the Morva stabilized group if and only if the height is a multiple of 2 to the n minus 1. In a project of Beardry, Hill, and Shi, we apply computation in norm BPR to understand E theory equivalently. So first, the story starts with the real orientation. The real orientation is a C2 homotopy ring map from BPR to EH in all heights, which leaves the complex orientation of EH. Let's norm this map up. We obtain a C2 to the N orientation. By computing relations between different generators in norm of BPR, we can compute the homotopy groups of EH equivalently. We show that as a C2 equivariant comes to ring, the homotopy of EH is a compilation of a localization of an equivariant polynomial ring. The equivariant polynomial ring is a nice quotient of the underlying homotopy groups of the norm of BPR. Using the real orientation and its norm, we can apply techniques of the slice spectral sequence to understand EH equivariantly. For example, we can show that the equivariant orientation factor through a localization of norm BPR. Furthermore, this localization is both co-free and it's periodic. That implies the E theory are periodic themselves equivalently. What's more interesting is that the periodicity of this localization agrees with the minimal periodicity of homotopy fixed point of E theories in all known cases. Finally, using our technique, we can define and analyze equivariant version of classical chromatic spectra. The classical truncated brown peterson spectra has non-trivial Ki localization if and only if i is less or equal to the height. In our theorem, we generalize to the equivariant version their equivariant truncations of the norm of BPR, and they have non-trivial Ki localization if and only if i is less or equal to 2 to the m minus 1 times m can be understood as the equivariant height. In this project, I wish to combine different aspects of equivariant stable homotopy theory together and make exciting computation to understand chromatic homotopy theory, especially in higher heights. This is the picture I'm talking about today. The C conjecture is related to the norm of real bordism by localized slice spectral sequence and using equivariant orientation, we can understand chromatic homotopy theory from equivariant stable homotopy theory. I'm currently working on different aspects of this picture. With Meyer and Shi, we apply the localized slice spectral sequence to understand structures of norm BPR. With Berner and Quigley, we apply the Adam spectral sequence to understand norm HF2 itself. With Bernardry, Hill, and Shi, we, apply we investigate equivariant Johnson-Wilson spectra and higher equivariant K-theories. Finally, I want to understand what's the direct relationship between the Siegel conjecture and chromatic homotopy theory and generalize it to odd primes. This is the end of my talk. Thank you for watching. I will be in the employment next work in session two, which, appear, which is on Thursday, October 15th. If you are interested in my research, please come by and have a talk.